States Open at Arapahoe Park with a look back at a truly amazing year in horse racing, highlighted by the first Triple Crown winner in 37 years. As we review 2015 and bring in 2016, we also follow the journey of a retired racehorse to becoming a jumper and take you to Racehorse Rookie Camp to find the sport's next star. We're showing you the behind the scenes of horse racing and some of sport's most majestic athletes. So get a leg up, come on to the track, and be ready for the start, because the horses are at the post. Welcome to a look at the year of horse racing in 2015. I'm Jonathan Horowitz, the announcer of the horse races in Colorado at Arapahoe Park. The horse of the year in the United States in 2015 was certainly American Pharaoh. His name will forever be mentioned among horse racing's greatest. They're up in the Belmont Stakes. As the winner of one of the most elusive prizes in sports, the Triple Crown. After years of close calls by other horses, American Pharaoh swept the Kentucky Derby, Preakness, and Belmont for the first time since affirmed in 1978. The moment of the year was when that 37-year dream became a reality, and horse racing and sports fans gathered around the country to celebrate the greatness of a Triple Crown champion in June. The 37-year wait is over! American Fool is finally the one! American Fool has won the Triple Crown! Sports likes to build up, but it also likes to bring down. And so when Kenice got the better of American Pharaoh in the Travers Stakes in August, there were doubts about whether Pharaoh's reign had come to an end. And they're off in the Breeders' Cup Classic and American Pharaoh quick and destroyed. That makes his next and final race, the $5 million Breeders' Cup Classic in October, the race of the year. American Pharaoh went out with an exclamation point for owner Ahmed Zayed, trainer Bob Baffert, and jockey Victor Espinoza. You see, a horse is probably not concerned with his legacy like a human athlete. He eats, sleeps, runs, and acts like a horse. It's we who care, and American Pharaoh reminded us not to lose hope in our dreams and gave us a glimmer of what it would be like to be graced by a modern incarnation of the mythological Pegasus. Every Triple Crown winner who raced after the Belmont did lose at least once, but seven of them have won their final career race. American Pharaoh's six and a half length win in the Breeders' Cup Classic in track record time tied Secretariat's 1973 Canadian International for the biggest margin of victory in a final race after Triple Crown Glory. As the field heads for the far turn, American Pharaoh in front for Victor Espinosa by two lengths. Epinex, then Frosted and Tonalist toward the inside. And now here comes Tonalist looking for running room toward the rail. Epinex toward the outside. They're all beginning to bear down on American Pharaoh. Frosted is there in fourth, regains third by just ahead, midway on the far turn. American Pharaoh through it all, still in front, opens back up here by two and a half, three lengths to the top of the stretch. Epinex continues used to give chase frosted third totalist in fourth a quarter mile from home and american pharaoh is into the stretch at keeneland in the breeders cup classic a five length lead as he comes to the eighth pole fnx second frosted far back in third totalist is in fourth into the final furlong there will be a fourth jewel in the crown he's an everlasting credit to the sport American Pharaoh has belted a Grand Slam in the Breeders' Cup Classic. The race of the year in Colorado could represent a national trend for horse racing in 2016. Gates open, the front range stakes is underway. And the front range stakes on June 28th over seven furlongs featured a field of 11 that matched Colorado's best, state bred horses of the year and past winners of the race, against out-of-state shippers. When the dust cleared, it was a female horse, Lady Contender, defeating male horses in a thrilling stretch duel. Female horses have been winning Battle of the Sexes races with more regularity, including in two Breeders' Cup races in 2015. And next year could feature more Ladies' Days in the winner's circle. 
It's I'm a happy strike and Brian Terrio who have the lead pressure to the inside by Bourbon Sense and Mike I. Marino and EF5 and Kelly Bridges to the outside in the yellow silks. These three race a length and a half in front of embellishing Bob and Enrique Gomez taking a brave route up the rail on the favorite. Ali Oop Oop trapped wider on the course. Magical Twist is starting to run on. Turquoise cap for Dennis Collins. And then comes Mr. Wild Kitty Lady Contender, Ghost Vapor, Sylvana San Wally Van off the turn and into the stretch in the front range stakes and Bourbon Sense cut the corner. Has the lead with embellishing Bob into the clear trying to run him down. And the mare taking on the boys. Lady Contender running a strong race. Magical Twist also getting into it from the center. Here comes Magical Twist widest of all with Lady Contender embellishing Bob and Bourbon Sense hitting the line Lady Contender and Magical Twist in a photo finish it might have been the mirror against the boys but it'll be a photo between Lady Contender and Magical Twist and then came embellishing Bob in Bourbon Sense final time 7 furlongs 1 minute 25.02 seconds an exciting renewal of the front range stakes Gates Open at Arapahoe Park is presented by Tito's Handmade Vodka. A lot of people don't like kind of the way that our package looks because it's not a frosted, see-through, painted bottle. You know, I'm from San Antonio and I didn't understand that Gucci, you know, fancy stuff. It's just kind of a regular bottle with regular cap, paper label. I always just figured if you're going to pay for something, you pay for the juice because that's what you're going to drink. You don't have to pay another four or five bucks for a fancy bottle. My bottle was designed by me and I'm a geologist, so of course I liked it. We've been around since 1972. We are the voice of the horse industry and what we try to do is be aware of what's going on in the legislature in different developments, different municipalities, so that we can maintain horses as part of our life and lifestyle. We're here to make sure that the powers and the rights of people to own horses remains the same as it has been for many, many years. Horses are extremely important to our heritage. It's important to our economy. We're a $1.6 billion industry in the state of Colorado and there's over 156,000 people involved with our industry. So I think we have a real important role in the economy, but also in the lifestyle and what horses bring to each one of us. Come on board and get involved with us in our Blue Ribbon Partnership Program and show others your passion about the lifestyle and about owning horses. All racehorses celebrate their birthdays on January 1st. As we wrap up 2015 and look ahead to 2016, we first follow the journey of a retired racehorse to a new career. And then later, we show you how a horse is preparing to begin her young career in 2016. Human athletes can go into broadcasting or take up golf after they retire. What can a racehorse do? Secretariat retired from racing in 1973. At the end of the year, he won the Triple Crown as a three-year-old. John Henry retired as Horse of the Year in the United States in 1984 at the age of nine. Although old for a racehorse, that's still relatively young in the life of a thoroughbred. Let's go beyond the finish line and follow the journey of one equine athlete coming off the racetrack. Sweet Peaceful Dream was foaled in Colorado in 2010 to be a racehorse. The chestnut filly, trained by Kim Oliver, made 14 career starts in Colorado, California, and Arizona from 2013 to 2014. One win, four seconds, like in this race at Arapahoe Park, and one third. Sweet Peaceful Dream in third, but it's Catianus Gold going on to the victory by a length. Sweet Peaceful Dream closed well to finish in second place ahead of... She retired at the age of four. Like their human counterparts, equine athletes are faced with questions about what's next. When she first came... She had one track mind, and that was to race and to go, and when you got on, she was, she was going. Trainer Ashley Gubich specializes in transitioning racehorses into new careers. She and her two-year-old son, Chase, 
<laughs> Work with many horses from Arapahoe Park through Cantor Colorado's program for retired racehorses. She began Sweet Pea's Full Dreams transition from racehorse to sport horse. What did Sweet Pea learn to begin a new career? A lot of patience and let's get on without thinking we're gonna race and just kind of relax and stand when somebody gets on and walk off and realize that she's part of a team where you're always working together rather than, not that you're not a team when you're racing, but more racing it's you have one job to get across the finish line, whereas her new job is to learn how to communicate with me or whoever's riding her for whatever is gonna come up. So it's a lot of just getting her to focus more on, on cues, we did walk trot canter, started over little poles, and just got her to focus and uh, relax and lift her back up, which is a really uh, different thing for racehorses. A lot of just relax and listen and, you know, learn how to be a team member. As part of Cantor Colorado's program that retrains many racehorses from Arapaho Park, Sweet Peaceful Dream now has the foundation that could serve a former racehorse well in many new skills. Sweet Peaceful Dream worked with canter trainer Kim Leonard on the road to becoming a jumper. Thoroughbreds have excelled in show jumping at the sport's highest levels, at the Olympics and at FEI World Cups and four-star events. A different sport, but one in which the power and agility of thoroughbreds help them excel. The racing is actually good for them because it helps to build their bone density um, to galloping. So it's a lot confirmation, it's a lot how they think about things, and I think a good jumper mostly is whether they enjoy it, whether they like it. I have horses with crooked legs that you would never think would make jumpers, and they do amazing things. And so she's got all of the pieces to become a really fabulous jumper. The confirmation, the brain, and the interest in doing it. I'm most impressed with her mind. She is really willing to work through things. We've just been doing simple grids like that and teaching her how to jump based on um, very small repetitive fences. And that way she gets a chance to figure out how her body works because she's grown quite a bit in the last six months and so she's still figuring out how to finagle these new long limbs. So it's teaching her how to use her body, how to jump over the fences and um, where her feet go to take off and to land. Just one year after finishing on the racetrack, Sweet Peaceful Dream boarded a trailer from Colorado to Kentucky to compete at the Kentucky Horse Park, one of the top equestrian venues in the world. The TCA Thoroughbred Makeover, presented by Retired Racehorse Project in October, featured 200 former racehorses from the United States, Canada, and Great Britain competing in 10 different disciplines. Jumping, dressage, barrel racing, eventing, ranch work, competitive trail, field hunter, show hunter, polo, and freestyle, with $100,000 in prize money on the line. From Arapahoe Park to the Kentucky Horse Park, quite an accomplishment for Sweet Peaceful Dream. The whole point is for her to go and represent Colorado thoroughbreds really well. She's an excellent spokes pony because she's sound, she has a wonderful brain, she's good looking, and she's athletic. And so for her to go to Kentucky and represent Colorado, and especially Cantor, Colorado, will be exactly what we want. Soar, seen here in her last racing victory at Fort Erie in Ontario, Canada, and her new trainer, Lindsay Partridge, won the competitive trail. The gray mare was also crowned the 2015 America's Most Wanted Thoroughbred. For retired racehorses, the sky, maybe even the one lit up by the Olympic flame, is the limit. Gates will open at Arapahoe Park in 2016 with the return of live horse racing in the Rocky Mountain State from May to August. During the off-season, follow horse races from around the country at Mile High Racing locations located throughout Colorado. More information is available at MileHighRacing.com and Facebook.com slash Arapahoe Racing. Arapahoe Park, one of only eight tracks in North America with thoroughbred quarter horse and Arabian racing. 
where horses come first. You can buy Tito's in all 50 states, getting in most of the chains and a lot of the kind of the better independent stores, bars and restaurants and stuff. It seems like our consumers kind of help us more than anything. When people ask for it in liquor stores and bars, it helps us out tremendously. I'm Tito Beverage. Cheers. I'm joined by Cimarron Gurky. Now, baseball players have spring training, football players have rookie camp, and we're going to show you what happens with rookie horses and how they develop and get ready to go to Arapahoe Park or other racetracks around the country. The Broncos have Dove Valley, and Arapahoe Park horses have the farm of Cimarron Gurky out here in Brighton. We're standing here with maybe a grand, and tell us what we're going to see today, because just like a rookie who just got drafted, maybe a grand just went through the Silver Cup horse sale, and she's one years old and getting ready to race next year in 2016 at Arapahoe Park. Yeah, we're uh, going to get her moving around today, get her to learn how to disengage, give to pressure, take a saddle and get on and ride her and uh, that's and and keep and that's what we'll keep doing through the season or preparing for the season uh, getting her into flat tack and galloping on the racetrack and and so yeah this is one of her this is her debut what's a one-year-old horse like compared to a horse who's ready to race what do you need to teach them oh you need to teach them a lot a lot a lot of patience a lot of uh, just how to relax how to accept things teach them right from wrong, to make the wrong thing hard and the right thing easy is basically the easiest way a horse learns. And so you're like the coach teaching a rookie. What's your background to be able to do all this with the rookie horses? Uh, I've grown up uh, on a horse. Uh, I've probably been on a horse longer than I could walk. And uh, I, I've had an extensive rodeo background. I've made five national finals. I've ridden bareback bucking horses. Uh, I just... I still ride some bucking horses, not as much as I used to, but because mainly I've come into training horses and, and I've just had a lot of success with starting colts and babies and getting them ready for either to be a ranch rope horse or a race horse. And, and uh, so yeah, I've had quite a few years experience and quite a few head underneath me. I've probably been on over 10,000 head of horses in my life. That's amazing. So before the horses go on to their careers, they go through you, so we'll leave you to it. The coach, the player, maybe a grand, and here is the first ever practice that maybe a grand is going to have to potentially be a racehorse at Arapahoe Park in 2016. All right, here we go. All righty, well, first off, I'm gonna just get moving out a little bit. I use this flag, get them used to stuff like this, and move out. You know, she's got a nice little stride already. Open around there, nice, pretty calm. Oh, there she's got a little fire to her. So we'll kind of just let her move out a little bit. So her background is she's sire by Grand Minstrel. That's one of the leading sires in Colorado. And her mother, her dam, is Bee's Gal. And this is the first of Bee's Gal's offspring who's going to race. Yeah, and Beast Al had a pretty successful racing career too. So I'm kind of excited. We'll just have to see. Now I'm going to ask her to stop here in a second. Whoa. See, she listened pretty good right there. Now I'm going to move her off the other way. And I just kind of lean and I drive her with my body language. That was really good that she relaxed there and listened. Yeah, her mother won 10 races and earned more than $100,000. So yeah. there's a lot of high hopes for Yeah, there is. for you. Yeah, I know Ted Trounsen is really excited about this filly. So I talked to him the other day and I said, "No, she's she's doing everything really well." Said she's got some fire in her and some fight, but that's something that you look for in a racehorse. We've had some very good two-year-olds at Arapaho Park, so yeah. we may be looking at the next one. Yep, yeah, uh, the Grand Minstrel that I started for Monk Hall last year uh, was third in the Gold Rush. Yeah, that was the $100,000 race. Yep, so now that I got her attention, she's focused on me. Go ahead and catch her. 
and start doing some softening with just from the ground with the just with a halter. I use all rope halters and and I use a lot of tack that doesn't break and that gets their attention and teaches them instead of like it, they like these rope halters really apply the right amount of pressure in the right spots when they're used correctly. And she knows how to move around now with the lead rope. She knows how to lunge. And so we'll lunge her a little bit. Don't go that way. Which way? See, she's kind of wanting to hit that lead rope a little bit. So see all this softening on the ground right here that I'm doing is going to set her up to be so I can steer her once I get on her. And I'm going to teach her how to flex and give and everything. Right now I'm going to stop her and disengage that hind end. Whoa. I always kind of think of uh, spring out in the hill country, it's kind of underneath some cypress trees, you know, a little bit of kind of like fresh mint and stuff growing around it. And the spring's just bubbling up this like really cool limestone water and I'm like putting my head down and just sucking right out of it. There's something just perfect about it. Her ears are right on me, her eyes are right on me. She's really focusing good. Now I'm gonna desensitize her with this flag. And see, she knows when I ask her to move out with the flag, she knows how to do it. And then when I tell her it's all right, this flag's not gonna hurt you, I'm gonna reinforce it. And that builds her confidence in me that I'm not gonna hurt her. Now I'm just gonna throw this rope around her a little bit, do a little bit more, just kinda getting her used to stuff, getting swung around her. And so I don't overdo the desensitate sensitizing as much as I do with some other horses with rope horses and stuff. See right there, just checking her cinch, letting her know that that's where that pressure is going to come when I put that saddle up there. So now we'll go to a saddle. I'm just going to throw this up here. I'm not going to sneak it. We're going to throw it up there and that's the pressure right there. Now I'm going to pull it back off. That's the release. See, she, she was, you know, a little excited. She didn't really know exactly what was happening. So I just put enough pressure on there for her to learn something. Yeah, when we're in the paddock, you take for granted that the horse can do these types of things. I think she's gonna probably play around a little bit when we ask her to step off with the saddle, just cause she's a grand minstrel and they're just typical like that. But right now I'm cinching this up. I'm not gonna get it super tight yet. Now I'm gonna step back and ask her to move off here. And when I do, if she does buck, I'm gonna keep her moving and bucking until she, want, until she learns that bucking is the wrong idea. She might just trot right off, or she might not. But I'll keep her close to here and into me so she can't bounce off the outside of the arena. And she's giving in pretty good. She's still got some fight and a little being a little ornery about it, but that's just <laughs> grand minstrel baby, basically. Oh, good girl. Now I'm gonna do some more desensitizing in the saddle. Jump around, cause I mean, you know, jockeys gotta get legged up on these horses. So they need to be ready for that rider where they're in that paddock. And that's all preparing her for when I, my butt hits the saddle. See, she wants to move out already. That's good. That's basically what I, would, what I do on a, 
on the first few rides in the round pen. Thank you for allowing us to take you around the racetrack and show you the behind the scenes of horse racing in 2015. On behalf of Arapahoe Park and Altitude Sports and Entertainment, best wishes for many winners in the holiday season and new year ahead. I'm Jonathan Horowitz. Keep picking winners.